Alligators, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty, and today's video is going to be a story time of some of my more scandalous, crazy church camp, Jesus camp experiences back in the day. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while, sort of like exposing church camp and what really happens there because it's not all worship and rainbows and sunshine, let me tell you that much. Yes, I dyed my hair. I know that all the comments are going to be about that unless I like say it verbally out loud. So I did dye my hair. It's a lot darker. If you guys don't recognize this backdrop, then you're probably new to my channel, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. But if you've been around here for a while, you know that this means I am back in Ohio visiting my family for the holidays. That's why my setup looks a little bit different. I'm also in the process of moving, so my setup might look a little bit unfamiliar for a while. But without further ado, we're just going to jump on into these crazy church camp stories. I shouldn't really tell you guys hints as to when or where this happened, and I feel comfortable sharing a lot of this stuff because there's no way you could possibly know. I've actually been to a decent amount of church camps, some of which were not even in the state that I'm from. California. They're like in other states in the Midwest and other parts of the country. I'm just gonna be real vague because I'm not trying to get anyone sued and I don't really think you could mm, you could get sued for some of the stuff actually. The first one I want to talk about was a church camp that took place. These all were pretty much early-ish high school. I was in a cabin, little cottage, I don't even know what you want to call it, with a couple of my really close friends and then some other girls who went to my church and were in my little youth group. By the way, in case you guys were wondering, I'm Christian. I was raised Christian. So that's the kind of church camp I've been to. One of the girls in my cabin was someone who was like really involved in the church, really involved in the youth group. And to this church camp, she had brought her older sister. And it was very clear when meeting her that she did not want to be there, that she basically got dragged into coming there because of her parents and because of her sister. My friends and I were talking to her and she pulls out a vape. And this is when I was so young, like before vapes were a thing that everybody used and it was like not weird. And so for her to pull this out in the middle of our cabin, when the supervisor was gone I was just like oh my god that's so bad what are you doing like what's even in that I didn't even understand what vaping was and so she starts vaping in the cabin we weren't even supposed to have phones there let alone vape pens okay it was like one of the big legit vape pens maybe I shouldn't even be saying vape pen it was just a vape I don't know the difference because I don't personally vape I've never done it but you get what I'm saying I'll insert a picture on the screen and so she was blowing clouds as she was talking to us in my friends and I are just like oh my god we're gonna get in trouble like we can't have this drug related smoking device thing here Obviously, it's not drugs, but definitely against the rules. She had brought a plate of cookies with her, right? A lot of us brought food and snacks. There was a cafeteria there, but we also like to bring snacks and we were allowed to do so. She's eating the cookies. I tried to reach to like eat one because she offered them to us. And then she was like, just so you know, these have weed in them. She tells us that they're edibles. So I was like, okay, never mind. I had never smoked before. I was like, not trying to get high at this church camp. A counselor ended up coming in and she noticed like the air looked weird because you know, if you're vaping a ton in a small area, the air air just gets cloudy and you can smell it. I don't care what anybody says. If you're in a confined space, you can still smell the vape. And so the counselor came in and she looked puzzled. She was kind of just confused as to what was going on. Counselor ends up eating the edibles, the cookies from that girl who had just told us that there was pot in the cookies. She didn't get them to her, but the counselor started just eating them. And like, what was she going to do? Be like, no, don't eat those. Those have drugs in them. Our counselor low-key got high off of the weed cookies. Yeah, that stuff happens. At church camp. If there are any parents watching this video right now, just so you know, don't think because you're sending your child to church camp that we're gonna get to this next story and maybe this will give you some more insight. This was another church camp. I believe the following year, actually this might have been the last church camp I ever went to because I just got kind of old and I stopped being as involved at that time. I need to be careful about like what I say here because this is the one that can get people in so much freaking trouble. This church camp was really, really fun because we didn't have as strict of a schedule like many of the other ones I had been to in the past where we had to be here at this time and do this at this time. We had a lot of free time during the day which was awesome we were allowed to paint we were allowed to go in like the water and stuff just like do random activities of our choosing and there's this one thing that I always loved to do during the free time and that was to go over to this area where there was like water and streams and rocks I don't really know how to explain it it was just kind of like a little hiking spot and it was secluded where there were no camp counselors unless someone decided to go over there by choice but no one was supervising like you could basically get away with doing whatever you wanted to in oh my god I just remembered I snuck out at this church camp 
I totally snuck out. If you guys want a part two, thumbs up this video and leave a comment below because they only get more scandalous from here on out. Back to what I was saying, I had a friend who would always go with me. And so one of the days which we went over there, she ended up bringing this guy with us and he worked for the camp. He was like one of the counselors. He wasn't like a super old dude. He was like young and he was pretty attractive and they had been flirting throughout the entire week. But it's still like, eh, because he was literally working there. Like he is so liable for this and he was probably over 18. He was probably 18, 19, 20. And my friend and I were both like 15, 16. So this was just not okay. We get over there and they start getting really touchy. They start kissing and I'm just like super awkward. Like, oh no, this is not freaking happening. They end up doing the dirty over on the rocks by the waterfall in the secluded area of the church camp. She'd never had sex prior to this. So she lost her virginity at church camp. I could not have anticipated this was going to happen if I tried. Now that I'm like thinking about it, I feel like they must have planned this. And I felt like I was the person they were using to make it look less suspicious because if he just went off alone with her that would have looked really bad so I definitely feel like they did that on purpose but I still really can't be for sure and that image is burned in my head forever obviously I wasn't watching on purpose but I did happen to see some of it because I was making sure they were okay I didn't know what was really happening it also wasn't one of those things where I could have walked back myself because it was so far away I would have gotten lost like you had to use the buddy system I literally sat there while they had sex and it only lasted like a couple minutes and they were already done and then we went back to camp and then she carved I lost my virginity at church camp into the wood of the bunk bed so if you guys ever see things written on the bunk beds at church camp or in the bathroom walls. I would say just from personal experience, witnessing a lot of the stuff, a lot of that stuff is true. The next story I have for you guys is one that takes place at another summer camp and I think this was like going into freshman year. This took place completely out of state in like the most random state. I'm not even gonna give you guys a hint because I don't want you guys to guess. Not that it matters though. The story isn't like that bad as compared to the two I just shared. I was at this church camp and I got bit by a freaking spider and my whole leg literally swelled up. It was bad. Not only was it a spider bite, but I was like super allergic to it. And I had to like go in this tent and get like medical assistance. And because I was in a different state, it was like a bug that was completely foreign to me. And like they don't even have in California. I don't even know if it was a spider. It was like a certain kind of spider. It wasn't just like a normal bite. And I kid you not, my thigh, it was this leg right here. It swelled up so large. I couldn't even get pants on and things like that that I had been wearing. And this camp was basically two weeks long. So I had to be in the tent getting medical assistance like pretty much much half the time I was there to like tend to this thing and put lotion ointment stuff on it and there wasn't really much else I could do besides that but I am convinced to this day that that bug was like in the cabin and that's how I got bit because it was definitely in my sleep I woke up with it if you've ever had like a foreign bite like that where your entire leg arm whatever swells up for two weeks straight it freaks you out and then in addition to this I ended up having like Loki a seizure in the bathroom I've had one other seizure besides this I might have had more than just one besides this but like one other one that I remember, which could be a separate video. I had one at Waterworld. I had a seizure there in the locker room and it was so scary. But anyways, this happened in the bathroom at this church camp where basically I just got super dizzy and I like fell to the ground and had a seizure. And the sad part is, and you probably won't even believe this, but no one even freaking helped me. I don't even think anybody knew I was having a seizure. Around this time in my life, I was being put on different medications for stuff because I was hospitalized. And then my ADD, we were just trying to figure out like how to properly medicate me. As you guys know, I take Concerta every single day. That's all I take for medication. That works great for me. But around this time, they were doing trial and error with like different stuff. And this specific medication messed me up, made me super dehydrated and dizzy and lightheaded. And so I would have fainting spells. And so if the fainting spells got really bad, I would seize. In the bathroom, I felt one coming on like randomly. And so all I could do was sit down. I couldn't even speak because when you're in that state of mind, like you don't really know how to talk. Like you can just feel it coming and you just like have to sit down and just kind of let it happen. And that sounds terrible but that's like what it is you don't have much control over your body or your mind or like your ability to really like tell somebody I need help and I was also around all these random girls I didn't know in this like other state I blacked out I know I had a seizure because it was the same exact thing as last time when I had a seizure and when I woke up like no one was there like I was just laying in the bathroom by myself this bathroom was disgusting it was one of those like outdoor bathrooms it was just gross and I'll like literally never forget that I'm pretty sure if somebody directly saw and realized what was happening they would have went and got 
fought somebody or like helped me out but I don't think anyone really paid attention to me like that's a thing because I was just in this corner having a seizure and it was not really in a place where anybody would look and also me especially at this age when I was younger I'm still like this unfortunately whenever I need help even if it's like medically I refuse like I'll deal with it on my own like I'm fine like I'm okay I remember even when I was in preschool once or like kindergarten I had the flu or something like I was sick at school but I loved school so much that I didn't want to go home I didn't want to like get in trouble or like have anybody try to help me out that I seriously went in my backpack and threw up and like told my friend who saw me do that I was like don't tell anyone like don't tell anyone I just did that because I wanted to stay at school this is getting weird and gross the point is I don't like having people help me out I don't know so like I literally had a seizure at this camp and I didn't even tell my mom until like recently like maybe a year ago or something like something got brought up about the other seizure I had and I told her and that is just not okay like I said I was on different medications plus I had the freaking spider bite going on and like I just should have told somebody that happened so that was just like a weird almost traumatic experience I had at church camp that I never told anybody about with that being said I'm gonna end this video here thank you guys so much for watching please give me a big thumbs up if you would like to see a part two because there are a lot of scandalous stories I can remember more and more as I'm talking about all these ones so let me know comment below subscribe if you are new here turn on my post notifications by hitting that bell button twice also follow my social media and I do have a patreon if you guys want additional videos exclusive photo shoots private snapchat etc that'll be linked below and I will see you guys in the next video later alligators bye